and I want to thank the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Caucus for hosting this important event. Uh, we are, look, what we're really doing is we're coming out of what uh, uh, future anthropologists will call the fossil fuel age. Renewable energy and energy efficiency technologies are becoming cheaper, more widespread, and easier to apply and use. Not only a good idea to turn these technologies, uh, it's our moral duty. I'm excited to be a member of Congress and kind of have a front row seat uh, as we transition away from fossil fuels and toward uh, renewable and sustainable energies. Uh, the Earth is finite. Fossil fuels are limited, and we need to be circumspect of this as we work to innovate away our reliance on destructive and carbon-intensive energy technologies. Uh, Americans make up only 6% of the world's population, but you know that we consume fully one-third of the world's total energy. And this proportion would be even more out of balance if we weren't already employing energy efficiency technologies in this country, I believe one of our greatest jobs in the Congress is to make sure that we start the inevitable transition toward a cleaner and greener future, economically, environmentally, and morally speaking. It is essential that we enact common sense policies to incentivize the adoption of energy efficiency if we push ourselves transition to products that will preserve our climate, create jobs, reduce manufacturing costs, and lower energy bills, we will be able not only to sustain our standing standard of living, but also to stimulate growth far into the future. That's why I've introduced several bills uh, to encourage the use of renewables and energy efficiency products. There is the Streamlining Energy Efficiency for Schools Act. Uh, this is an act that acknowledges that uh, K through 12 public education institutions are operating in deteriorating buildings. 43% of schools indicate the poor condition of their facilities interferes with the quality delivery of education. While there are already numerous federal initiatives available to help schools, become more energy efficient. These programs are not aggregated in one place. So we have busy school administrators who don't have the time or, or really the resources to find all of the uh, federal programs that support school energy efficiency. The Bipartisan Streamlining Energy Efficiency for Schools Act provides a coordinated clearinghouse for schools to help connect them with those federal programs and financing options. Um, we have a lot of widespread support for that, that act in the Congress. And there's the Nonprofit Energy Assistance Act. Nonprofit uh, companies are reliant on the bare bones donations and grants that they have coming in. And they're, you know what they're like. They're living hand to mouth. Uh, and they have trouble investing in upgrades and they have trouble doing long-term projects of any kind. Uh, but energy retrofits and energy efficiency upgrades have been tough for them. Uh, these organizations include churches, boys and girls clubs, YMCA's, 2,900 nonprofit hospitals. It, but uh, the thing is with them, they're at a terrible disadvantage because they are a nonprofit. They can't be benefited from tax credits that promote energy efficiency. The Nonprofit Energy Assistance Act is a cost neutral, bipartisan bill that would provide financial grants to nonprofit organizations to help make the buildings they own and operate more energy efficient. Now, the language of both the nonprofits and the school energy efficiency bills are currently included in the big Energy Policy Modernization Act package that is currently in conference. And I don't mind telling you that the Streamlining Energy Efficiency for Schools Act did pass the last Congress that got stalled in the Senate. We have a good reason to believe that these things will move going forward. And third, and finally, the Job Creation Through Energy Efficient Manufacturing Act uh, is another one of our bills. I'm a big believer in bringing back manufacturing to this country. 
manufacturing creates family sustaining, good paying jobs, inefficiencies in the industrial sector are vast and they can occur at every stage in the production cycle. Uh, because of this, the industrial sector, more than any other sector, has the most to gain from efficiency upgrades as it accounts for 40% of the $1.2 trillion in wasted energy that could be saved across our economy. The Job Creation Through Energy Efficiency Manufacturing Act would authorize a $250 million grant program that would provide funding to state programs that finance energy efficient retrofits and renewable energy use. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to the Hill today, helping inform us of the important groundbreaking work that you're doing. I look forward to working with you to promote policies in Washington that facilitate and encourage the work that you already have underway. Thanks so much. Everybody.